Green Zealots Max, and we're back. We're going to try this again. I'm going to make a quick one about um, let us make our Bibles in our own image. Because that's going to work for you. <laughs> so I got done listening to a debate on Modern Day Debate. It was a couple of months ago. Just kind of thought, oh, yeah, debate on the... Uh, it was between two people who... Both Christians arguing KJV only and arguing, well, KJV is good, but we have all these other Bibles too. And the debate never went where I where I would have immediately taken it. There was both a very, let's see how historical and how scholarly we can be and go into Greek and Hebrew and all of this stuff. Okay, and the people weren't that old. I mean, the, the guy who actually had his picture on the screen was maybe about 40. Um, and the other one just had a cartoon character, RC something, RC apologist. That guy's a nut job. Um with his arguments, at least. I had known nothing about the guy. I look at his page, and he's a James White follower, and he attacks um, uh, NIFB people. And I see a picture of Anderson there. So I'm assuming that means independent, fun independent fundamental Baptist because we hold to the King James Bible. And I guess they're referring, saying, making the point that maybe King James onlyism is some sort of cult. Like having the Word of God is somehow makes you a cult member. Huh. Now, I'm one of those people who only recommends the King James Bible. Um, that's what I recommend. But if people happen to have something else, that's what they like or that's what they're going to use. And they cursory. What is that? Is that the word where they casually read the Bible here and there? They don't really study. They're just a casual person. Whatevs. But yes, if you're going to do doctrine or you're going to do preaching, or you're going to do a Bible study, you got to use the King James. You do. And, you know, I recommend getting rid of all the um, other versions of Bibles. But that's for something that's a person who's been a Christian a while. Okay. Where you go, look at the differences with the Bible that you've been using and this new one here, a real Bible. That is not something that you come straight out the bat with, where as soon as they decide that they're saved, you say, now you, you got to get rid of that Bible and get this one. That's not how you do that. That's just a little bit of an aside. I want to keep this quick. Um, please ignore my fan. It's really hot. Really hot. Um, so what they went about doing is trying to go back and forth. Um, for those of you who don't know, the new versions, all the versions that aren't King James Bible, use an Alexandrian, uh, Vatican, Saniaticus for their translation, where the King James Bible... And a few others use Texas Receptus, but primarily King James in English is going to use a Texas Receptus. The, the verse numbers and all of that have been added, and they were added in with the King James Bible. It used to be once upon a time just called the Bible. King James was later added, later, later added because they had these different versions that were coming out. Most of the new versions are less than 100 years old. The NIV made in 1970, and that's one of the most popular ones. Now, what's the importance of this, really, what these debaters had never really gotten into, was I don't need to go into history. I don't need to go into Greek. The people who translated the Bible know way better Greek than me. There's like 50 guys working in teams, translating and making sure everything is right. They know more about the stuff than I do. What I can say for a fact is that there are no errors or contradictions in the King James Bible. Boom. Done. I don't need to go to another Bible. What I also do know is there are a lot of errors in the new versions. And the farther you get away from the King James Bible, the more errors that come in. Why is this? It's because every Bible other than the King James Bible has a copyright on it. They have to change the words in order to sell it and make money. Why do you think there are so many different Bible versions? Over 50 in English now. Just go to, well, here I am up here. I'm talking to camera. I forget what's on my screen. Uh, Bible Gateway, and just look at the list. It's ridiculous. And you go through these, and I'm going to read through uh, 1 John 5, 7. Most of the new versions don't even have it in there. Um, we're also going to look at 1 Timothy 3, 16. Most of the new versions take that out. Now, that's blasphemy. Because these are references directly correlating to Jesus Christ as God. 
This is the nature of God. We are talking about his attributes. And when you mess with that, that's blasphemy. That goes beyond heresy. That's their new versions for you. And you ask, oh, what's wrong with using this version? Let me tell you, if I was a Muslim and I was in a debate with a Christian, that would be my first point of attack. You don't know that you are right because you don't even have a text to use. You have 50 different ones. That's why I say, let us make our Bible in our own image. Which Bible do you like? Oh, I like this one. I like the NIV. It speaks to me. Oh, I like this one over here. I like the new King James because I'm new. I'm a new creature. Picking and choosing what the one they want. And this is where all these goofy doctrines come from. I shouldn't say all. A lot of them do. Um, and when you remove things like three and one of the Godhead, you remove things like that, you get things like modalism. You get this idea of polytheism. You remove 1 John 5, 7, hey, polytheism all over the place. Sure, roll that. King James Bible does not teach that. It teaches the Trinity. And all these other people, Oneness Pentecostals and these guys, they have their own Bible that they're working with. Are you working with the NIV? Maybe that's what that teaches them. But it's been proven time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. These, like, these things have errors in them. A lot of people say that actually they were, uh, they, some Gnostics got a hold of them and put Gnostic teachings in there. Other people would mo know more about that than me, but I can see errors. And if I can see errors as a layman, certainly a scholar should be able to see errors. So the main basis of focus and the argument for this um, between two Christians, King James only, or King James is a good translation, but this is also a good translation. Who decides there? The person themselves decides which one they like better. Is that the way it works? Is that the way it works? I decide that I like this, even though God says it's a sin. Is that the way it works? I like this God better than this word of God. It's not the way it works. All right. We're just going to do a brief thing here. First John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There you have it. Pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll check out the uh, NIV. Now, you notice they still have the verse numbers in here that are taken from the King James. Awfully brazen of them. So here's six, and then here is seven. For there are three that testify. And then there's a colon. And then it goes to verse 8. Well, looks like we got polytheism going here, doesn't it, in the NIV? Truly, it has to be the Word of God. It's so much more updated. Look at that. They just I bet they just came out with a new one last year. The Word of God just keeps evolving and changing. Look at that. Now we got three gods. He must have evolved. We can read verse 8. The Spirit... The water and the blood. And the three are in agreement. Okay, what's verse 8 here? And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Agree in one. We're going to go over here to 1 Timothy 3.16, King James Version. And without controversy, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. About covers it, doesn't it? Let's see what we got in the old NIV. New International Craptation. It's hard to even find the verse in this thing. 
beyond all question, the mystery from which the true, which true godliness springs is great. That sounds a little pagan. A little, little Wiccan. Something like that. Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. Hmm. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. He who? He who? 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 Going back to the KJV here. Same verse. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. <sighs> he appeared in the flesh some guy vindicated by the spirit that was cool angel psalm angels are looking at me probably everybody on the planet there's a lot of angels was preached on among in the nations oh i know i know we're talking about uh, muhammad we're talking about muhammad was believed on in the world was taken up in glory See what problems, see, this is not just a, a simple, you can't say they're all the word of God. You, you, they're, are you stupid? Are you ignorant? They are all the word of God. Really. When you mandatorily have to change text to get your copyright, those are the words of God. As opposed to the King James Bible, which is free. And you can't change the King James Bible. It cannot be changed because the patent is held by uh, the King of England. So let's just for uh, for fun and around, we'll uh, we'll pick a different version. What should we go for? See, look at this is the list of versions. Um, new Matthew Bible. Oh, that sounds like this has got to be. It says new. It says it's new. I've never looked at this Bible ever before, so it may actually be correct. Yeah, it is correct. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. I'm liking the Matthew Bible so far. I've never heard of it. Let's go to the, to the, old, the old ones that we know. <laughs> New Living Translation. Boy, I know some guys that are out there doing um, uh, outreach work and stuff like that, and they all seem to love this New Living Translation. Uh, I, I wonder if any of them actually read First John, like, does that, if that even exists to them? Uh, verse, uh, first John five, seven. So we have these three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood, <laughs> and they all three agree. Polytheism, man. The water, the spirit, and the blood. I'm guessing God, the father gets to be the water. Is that how that works? I'm not a, I'm not a New Age um, Wiccan witch person. I don't know which one's the water. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe all greater testimony that comes. Oh, that's they skipped another verse. Oh, they combined it. They did combine it. My mistake. See, here I am thinking there's more to the sentence than there actually is. So, it's hard to read it like this because the numbers are in the middle of the text. But let's read this again. New Living Translation. 1 John 5, 7 says, so we have these three witnesses. That's the whole thing. We have these three witnesses. Okay. That's good. We got three witnesses. That's all we know. What else do we got? I think the ESV is correct. We'll try ESV. What do you got? 
1 John 5, 7. For there are three that testify. We have in the English Standard Version. For there are three that testify. Polytheism again. There is nothing about them being one at all, regardless of what words you want to um, stick in there. What are you, uh, English Standard Version? I think you guys got, English Standard must have First Timothy, because I read the ESV not long ago as a comparison. I would have caught something like that, I think, unless I got a really old version. 14, 15. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifest in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen of angels. What? It says the exact same thing as the NIV. So, again, here we are at the same, the same problem. He, not God, was manifest in the flesh. So, these new versions are blasphemous, they're satanic. And these debates on this completely, completely just miss the point. Here's the, here's the fact. The King James Bible has no errors in it. Fact. All other versions do. And the errors that people bring up, they go back, well, if you go back to the ancient Hebrew and the ancient Greek, then... Like, these guys know anything about Hebrew and Greek. Okay? God put people who could translate that stuff perfectly. And the people who, who did that in the King James considered it to be the word of God. They didn't, weren't just making grammatical things. They treated it very carefully because they believed they're working with the word of God. You think these guys who come up with the NIV and the ESV, the NLTGBTQ, think they believe it's the word of God when they come out? They go, geez, we've got to change another 10,000 words to get our copyright. NIV takes 20,000 words off their book. That was like in, in a, a few versions ago. I'm sure they got a new version now. They take 40,000. Yeah, we'll just cut off the equivalent of Revelation off the back of the book. Don't need that. They don't need that. We'll just take out 1 John 5, 7. We don't need that. We'll mess with the baptism of Christ a little bit. It's not really God who came down in the flesh. Um, Jesus is a created being. We'll put that in there. And you have these punks out here who call themselves pastors and Christians, who actually say, well, you King James only people are just a bunch of cult members. It's a cult. And he uses this extreme argument that says people that use, that he says like fundamental Baptist or King James onlyist say that you could only be saved with the King James Bible and this and that and yada yada. That is such a straw man argument. If you became a Christian, would you not want the 100% true word of God? Yes or no? If you're reading a book that you know has errors in it, a textbook, for instance, what is the point of reading it? There's no point. If there is one error in the text that is not a basic typesetting error, or something where a word is defined differently today as it was back then, and it's construed as an error. If it's nothing like that, if there's an error in it, it's not the Word of God. How do, would you know then where the errors are? Unless somebody told you. Wow, there's a whole profession into how to translate the old NIV, ESV, blah, 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 blah. You get to make up your own definitions. Let us make Bible in our own image. I think there's a couple of homosexuals there on the NIV committee for translation. I wonder how many anti-homosexual uh, or sodomy things are in the Bible with the NIV translation. Hmm. Let us make the Bible in our own image. Sorry, this was a little bit of a rant. I only intended to do a five-minute video. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We're going to be coming out with something on the book of Jonah very, very soon. A full Bible study going through the whole thing. Looking forward to that. So, until next time, just use the KJV and tell people why. With that, Rod here.